here, right? We're here to talk about these global power rankings, League of Legends World Championships. Let's get into it. First and foremost, I'm sure some people may not even know beyond maybe some like, you know, advertising during these events. AWS and Riot have been partners for a long time, right? How did that relationship get started? Yeah, so many years ago now at this point, um, Riot and AWS kind of ventured to uh, use both the companies, you know, like superpowers to provide the best player experience for Riot. So we started working with them to move a lot of their uh, their game servers from data centers to the cloud. So that way we can, uh, you know, more easily uh, spin up instances in new geographies so more players can connect to the game. Also, we have, uh, you know, edge networks that have, you know, just massive amounts of throughput so we can uh, route those players to and from the game server uh, as quick as possible. So we started on that venture, you know, many years ago, I think maybe five, six years ago at this point. And uh, as we started marching towards the, an all-in on cloud world, uh, we really started, uh, you know, partnering on more than just, you know, the the commodity things. We started partnering in the world of esports and storytelling. And that's sort of where these uh, integrations into the broadcast that you see when you watch Worlds came from, uh, like global power rankings and win prediction. Um, it's through that uh, joint collaboration between AWS and Riot to really enhance the storytelling in the broadcast and find ways to be innovative and use innovative technologies uh, in the realm of esports. Gotcha. Nick, were you involved with any of those earlier projects as well? I unfortunately was not, so I need to lean on my friend over here for all of that background, but uh, we now all reap the benefits of it, so I'm happy to say that part, at least. Yeah, like broadly speaking, before we get into kind of specifics of this recent project, what does AWS handle versus what does Riot handle? Like, what's that general workflow look like for you guys? Um, Well, Riot, is they're a game company, right? Like, no one at AWS can make games like Riot does. (laughs) Riot really... Uh, that bread and butter is making the best possible game, the game that is the most fun and also has an uh, amazing business model attached to it. Where our forte li- uh, really lies is in the ability to build uh, elastic and scalable systems that are global um, in nature. So uh, we can really uh, support the largest amount of uh, audience as possible. So Again, with those two things combined, you get a really amazing ecosystem that millions of people around the world choose to spend their time and interact with. Awesome. So we have this kind of symbiotic relationship, right? We've done these part projects before. We've done stuff like Peaker's Advantage, solving for some of those problems. Uh, why then did this global power rankings get brought up? So why did why was that our next project that we wanted to tackle together? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, first and foremost, the the players were asking for it. Uh, The ecosystem has been looking for something like this. There have been various instances of players taking it upon themselves to generate their own rankings, devise their own systems. uh, And there was plenty of pent up demand for something like this. And in general, you know, approaching worlds, being in worlds right now, we are always looking to to stoke the debate in a healthy manner. Uh, and this is a, a great way of fueling that fire, getting that cross-regional debate going, and uh, just overall increasing the excitement and fervor around uh, our favorite time of year here at Riot Games uh, Worlds. I was yeah. uh, one of those keyboard warriors at one point, so I'm, I'm glad to have a place to vent some of that stuff out to, uh, to now. Yeah, it's fantastic. It gives uh, gives all the fans of all these different teams maybe a little more ammo, maybe a l- stir the pot a little bit. <laughs> the pot <laughs> no. is being stirred, yes. Yeah, I love, like, yeah, I was really excited when I saw this come out because uh, it's not something that's really been, I feel like, done a lot for a lot of online games and esports is, you know, these sorts of, like, all-encompassing power rankings. It definitely adds to the conversation. I love that I can uh, trash talk my other favorite sports teams when they get you know above my friends and power rankings or whatever it might be so i was really excited when this came out uh but let's get into that a little bit you know there wasn't a lot of stuff in place before this that was similar within esports so what before these global power rankings like what what did fans have what did athletes have to go off of yeah it's a it's a really good question it's a natural starting point for this whole conversation within esports there have been a couple of 
instances. One particularly comes to mind of an official ranking that ESL uh, produces themselves for mm -hmm. CSGO. Um, that was one of the one of the major, I think, players in the space prior to us breaking ground on this. Uh, Valorant also has um, their own version. It's it's hosted on VLR.gg. Um, that that's quite good. It's it's also Elo based. They do some things that are slightly differently than uh, how I think that we might approach that uh, if it's a space that we want to get into next year. Uh, so those are the first two that immediately come to mind. There's also like numerous examples in traditional sports, right? Um, there's the FIFA world rankings that they publish every year. That is that it's ELO based. And we uh, borrowed a lot of that methodology for where we landed with our uh, our launch and foray into this space. Um, I think in North America and the United States, uh, the AP top 25 is, is very popular. If anyone's a college football <laughs> fan, right, that it gets updated on a weekly basis and it's sourced through experts, uh, expert polling, which is yeah. great yeah. for, you know, passing the eye test, but perhaps a little bit old school for, you know, a tech forward company like AWS and Riot Games. Um, then there's also, you know, I don't know if there are any golf fans out there, but official world golf rankings, which is highly algorithmically generated uses a lot of in-depth in-game stats uh i think there is a world in which we want to borrow from some of that as well but mm -hmm. with the, the uh understanding that we wanted to launch at worlds this year during our largest uh event of the year on a pretty tight time frame we needed to do an ample amount of scoping and like i said earlier de-risking to make sure that we could launch smoothly uh so we borrowed uh bits and pieces from all of those different examples to basically land where we are today and honestly you know wally sports is different than traditional sports right yeah you know, bi-weekly patches uh we are different in that riot is the owner of the ip the game, the sports, where the operators of the tournaments, all of the leagues basically run under our umbrella. So we need to take, be able to take all of that into account. And being the owners and arbiters of that pipeline makes this really feasible for us to do because leagues have different numbers of teams. Uh, they get different numbers of international bids. Uh, they have different numbers of games. And overall, their shape of season are quite different. So there's all these various complexities and moving parts that we needed to take into account for getting a sustainable product off of the ground for launching at Worlds so that we can continue to iterate and improve on it moving forward. Yeah, and I think you hit on a really interesting point there that actually I hadn't thought of before, you know, shockingly, folks, we're not just completely improving this. I have I have met Nick and Nashville before, but <laughs> like you, you mentioned to me uh, in one of our first meetings that that point about you guys, owner, operator, like arbiter, everything for this sport. And that kind of puts this in a unique position, right? Where other sports, they might own the league but they didn't invent the sport or you know pretty much no other sport you guys completely control the environment with your patch updates like it is completely different than anything else because you guys do kind of own every end to end point of this process and you know how did that make this a little bit different to tackle from y'all's end like you had probably more access to data but also maybe a little bit more pressure on you to make sure that these are great for fans so like what how did that affect this process? Yeah, totally. It's, it's definitely a double-edged sword, right? Like traditional sports don't have patch updates, at least at the cadence that we do, right? I mean, the NFL most recently, I guess, just published their biggest patch update to, to date, right? Changing their kickoff. That to me is a patch <laughs> update, right? Like yeah. we do this on a bi-weekly basis though. They make maybe one small tweak every five years. We make yeah pretty material tweaks on a bi-weekly basis. So we need to be able to take that into account. Uh, it was one of the decisions we needed to make early on was how we were going to account for, for meta resilience. Um, not to get too far ahead here, but you know, we, we ran a, a hackathon in partnership with AWS last year. Uh, and that was a great way of generating a lot of ideas and understanding fan and player sentiment around how to approach this relatively amorphous space, right? Uh, and that was one of the things that I think generated a lot of ideas for us, but also established our uh, our core principles when wanting to launch something successfully for Worlds this year, which was to land something transparent and land something credible. So yeah. that ultimately is what sort of directed us into the subsequent decisions that we make that I think we're going to touch on uh, throughout this conversation. And Nick, the, the best part about Riot kind of having access to that level of 
having that level of access to the entire ecosystem is uh, partnering with AWS to basically take all of that data, put it into a single place and kind of be able to have the scalability to crunch all that information, come out with something that, you know, looks like a global power rankings table and take in all the different factors into account, uh, you know, because League of Legends is a complex game. The league structure is complex and also just the entire ecosystem is complex. So having the capability to do all of that in a single place is um, something that makes this particular challenge unique, but is also a benefit for us because it, it it's actually a lot easier um, using these tools when all the data is already in the cloud and stored in kind of a logical and uh, easy place to retrieve. 100%. We would not have been able to hit this milestone had it not been for this partnership. Let's keep it rolling here. So we've set up this problem, right? We wanted to get these global power rankings because the fans have been asking for it, because the players have been asking for it. How did we go? Did we know how to solve this? Because like you said, we this is a unique thing, right? This has never really been done before. Did we know how to solve it? And kind of what was each party responsible within that? How did we, we're at the whiteboard, we're kind of discussing how we want to do this. How did this get started? What did we do? Yeah. So this is one of those things where I'd say this is a solved problem, but not for Riot, right? Like okay. L- League of Legends has lots of nuances that we had to take into account. Starting with the hackathon was a great way to generate um, uh, bottoms up ideation uh, from from the community. We also did numerous rounds of caster interviews and, and expert evaluations with basically every tier one league all uh, with at least one of their casters to get their feedback um, to understand what their general sentiment was toward um, trying to approach solving this problem. And spoiler alert, they said, this is going to be really hard, guys. Good luck. Uh, and they were that's really, always great encouragement by the way <laughs> yeah yeah. And, yeah they were great partners in um helping us not bite off more than we can chew but also mm-hmm. level setting our expectations that this is not going to be uh perfectly received by everyone nor was that the point really the point was we know that there is no such thing as a perfect ranking system if there was that wouldn't make sports very fun you still have to play the game. There's still randomization involved. There's still competitive nerves and butterflies involved. So even if you have a team that is on paper leaps and bounds ahead of another team, on any given Sunday, something could happen. Uh, yeah, and, and that's why Dallas you... Cowboys fans, and they probably understand that <laughs> real well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really how we started by, you know, testing, understanding the the landscape from a player standpoint, understanding how our expert casters and our stats operators think about the space. And that gave us a, a solid foundation upon which we started assembling a team of data engineers, data scientists, uh, service engineers, UX designers. Um, and, and we really came together for the last uh, six months, really, to, to jam on this and we're really happy with how it came out. Gotcha. And, you know, we talked about some of the unique, again, kind of expand on the unique challenges part. You know, obviously traditional sports are very different from League of Legends esports. You guys had to make a lot of accommodations for that. Um, your leagues also aren't uniform in structure, which I guess I had never really thought of before we got into the nitty gritty of this. Like China has more teams than Korea, like international play versus domestic play. Can you talk a little bit more about how you guys had to approach that aspect of it? Yeah, that was one of the ones where um, we had to make a determination as far as how granular we were going to think about the data sets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the backdrop of wanting to launch for Worlds, um, you know, not to to jump too far ahead, but we ultimately ended up landing on on an ELO-based system because it is something that was well understood by... Uh, by our fan base. Um, and it, it is one of those things that enables us to calculate the, the relative skill level of opponents um, in, in zero sum games, such as chess, where it was what it was initially developed for, but also for esports, right? Um, and at a high level within the space, within ELO, you know, teams gain points for wins, they lose points for losses, and the system ultimately ends up determining what the expected outcome for that game was. So, 
we we wanted to move forward with this because it was battle tested, well understood, and flexible enough to ac accommodate some of these nuances that that we're touching on right now. The different number of games that get played, uh, the different number of bids to international events, um, and the different shapes of seasons themselves. So ultimately, doing something that was not head to head focused, and where we would have to accommodate the different transitive property effects of things and uh there is a lot of complexity that would go into solving that so we determine you know let's land on something that is relatively well understood that is battle tested um and and let's productionalize that and see what we, what additional factors going into next year we can start to layer into this foundation mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that we'll get into uh in a couple of minutes as well yeah and i know let me see here. I know that uh, you guys had the ha actually. We just got a comment too. Somebody's asking, you know, are we fans of Fnatic or T1 right now? I think Bobby Miller here. I think right now the if I remember right, the current rankings have T1 a little higher. So maybe we can get into that uh, a little bit later. Give uh, Bobby some insight into why why that might be. <laughs> uh, I wonder what region Bobby's hailing from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that yeah. might color. Bobby, where are you where watching you from? Let's yeah. know where you're watching uh, from. Commenting over there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you mentioned the hackathon too. Let's get into that a little bit. So I thought, first off, love hackathons. I think they're kind of fun, and it's a cool way for fans to get directly involved. Um, tell us about the hackathon that y'all ran in 2023 to help generate ideas and stuff. Uh, and kind of how that played into starting this project as well. Yeah, so last year we ran a hackathon to uh, basically crowdsource the idea of global power rankings to the Riot fan base and AWS developer uh, core, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had this data, we had an idea of uh, how we could use it, but Riot collects a lot of data. There's a lot of things that come out of the game server, so for like our collective team understanding you know what what is the best uh set of features from that data set to train a model uh was was you know just something we didn't know at the time so that's where we leaned on fans and players to like really take a look at this data really deeply inspect it and come up with their own ideas which you know we can then take a look at and fully understand the space um so that we can again like nick said hit the deadlines that were put in front of us and uh, release a product that fans, again, like transparently can understand how it works, but can interact with and create that discourse, which again is like the the real like uh, idea that we were trying to come across with, with global power rankings. We, we want more people to be talking about league esports. Um, and this is just a, a way that you can be data driven while talking about league esports, which was something that, uh, you had to be a really deep uh, fan, like a really big nerd, honestly, to like <laughs> dive into the stats in that way. But uh, yeah. this is a more digestible way of uh, organizing that data. And it's it's much more uh, yeah easy to take a look at because it's, it's on the League Esports website and uh, it's easy to navigate. 